Hindsight teaches us that what we think is good for us isn't and what we believe is bad for us may be just what we need. Your ex wasn't happy with you, so she left you. It's a blessing. You were not meant for each other. Don't stop thinking about her, rather reflect how you escaped a life of misery. Someone once told me to get a life. It was the best advice I ever heard. Getting over the pain of being abandoned by your spouse. Sometimes, your spouse's choice to leave may have come as a total surprise to you, while other times, his or her decision to abandon you may have been the product of long-standing conflicts between the two of you, in which case they may have abandoned you without giving you any previous warning. Following the loss of your partner, it is totally natural to have sentiments of worry for your spouse or significant other. As well as hatred and resentment against that spouse or significant other among other emotions. There will very certainly be a spectrum of emotions associated with your divorce or separation from your spouse. These will likely include the feelings described above, and in addition to the feelings that are specific to each individual's circumstances and experience. During the time it takes you to recover from the anguish of terminating a relationship, allow yourself some space and time to explore your alternatives for moving on from the grief of doing so, and continue with your life. When it comes to navigating one's way through life effectively at every level of one's work and personal life, the capacity to prepare for the future and think ahead is crucial. Prior to leaving, Make a plan that takes into account the chance that your self-care routine may be disturbed as a consequence of your spouse's absence, as well as the possibility that you will depart from your normal schedule. To be totally honest, you may not care about what is going on in the world around you. In your personal life, you may not care about what is going on. But if you have been abandoned by your partner, it is vital that you begin making a determined effort to enhance your physical and mental well-being as soon as possible. Clinical psychologists Mark Domic and Catherine Patricelli write on the emotional coping and divorce issue of the Journal of the American Medical Association about how eating healthy meals, engaging in frequent physical activity, and getting enough sleep can all help you cope during this difficult time in your life. Special edition dedicated to emotional coping and divorce is available online. It is now possible to access emotional coping and divorce. A special issue of the journal Psychological Science that is dedicated to the topic of emotional coping and divorce online. So, as I was saying, you must be able to commit your whole and undivided attention to the emotions of melancholy and the grief that you are experiencing during this time of mourning if you want to be successful. While there will be a large rise in the possibility that your spouse will return or that he hasn't fully left, the likelihood that you will face problems adapting to life without him or her will climb significantly even at the most critical points in a person's life. It is difficult to examine all of the vital components of that person's life at any given moment. Also, to get over the pain of your partner leaving you. The value of family and friends as well as the necessity of carving out time for one's own self-discovery cannot be overstressed, depending on the circumstances. The capacity of a person to reconnect with family and friends after divorce or after the dissolution of a marriage may prove to be a beneficial experience for both him or her and the couple after the breakdown or completion of their divorce. According to Preston Nye's article for Psychology Today, The Breakup Cure, Seven Ways to Heal and Find Happiness Again. Surrounding yourself with people who are healthy, pleasant, and helpful will help you deal with the loss of a marriage. The Breakup Cure, 7 Ways to Heal and Find Happiness Again. 
A book written by Preston Nye says that if you are going through a tough period in your relationship, it is important to surround yourself with people who are healthy, pleasant and supportive of you. If you are a pet lover, spending time with a pet on the other hand, may be fun in the short term, but it is feasible that it will be both enjoyable and useful in the long run as well. Irrespective of how alone you may feel, it is vital that you take the time to write down your thoughts and emotions as soon as they arrive in your head. Perhaps this will be a beneficial therapeutic practice at some time in the future, and I wish you all the best in your future therapeutic attempts. Another thing that can help you to get over the pain of someone leaving you is occupations and hobbies. There are numerous different types of personality characteristics that can be found, including belonging to various organizations, having personal interests, and working in various occupations to name a few examples belonging to various organizations. Having personal interests and working in various occupations to name a few examples are all good examples of the numerous different types of personality characteristics that can be found. There are many distinct sorts of personal qualities that may be discovered and categorized. If you are intending to be married, there is a significant probability that you will be compelled to postpone any extracurricular activities that you had planned, at least for the near future because of the commitment. Following a divorce or separation, the writers of the article Coping with a Breakup or Divorce recommends that it may be useful to rekindle previous hobbies and interests after losing a spouse throughout the course of the process. Learning to play the guitar or communicating in a foreign language for example, are both examples of activities that may be done as part of a lifelong learning process. Participating in community service projects such as teaching at a local elementary school or reading to patients in a nursing home can help you pass the time and keep your interest alive. What I'm trying to say is that it is vital to have a constant schedule of activities while going through the divorce healing process. Depending on your individual circumstances, it may also be useful for you to participate in activities such as returning to your usual job routine, doing errands and taking care of domestic tasks to mention a few examples. If you retain a feeling of normality in your present position, you may find it easier to relax and grow more comfortable with yourself as time goes on. Certain scenarios necessitate the recommendation against adoption owing to the hazards connected with the procedure. Consider the following scenario. As an illustration, when dealing with the grief of being abandoned by your spouse, it is vital to avoid using specific coping mechanisms to cope with the situation. This is particularly true when dealing with the dissolution of a marriage. To cope with the grief that comes with being abandoned by your spouse, it is vital that you avoid using some of the tactics described below to the extent feasible. It is vital to avoid employing some of the tactics described below as much as possible. In order to deal with the grief of being abandoned by your spouse, in order to cope with the pain of being abandoned by your partner. Taking into consideration the results of Domic and Patricelli's study, they have concluded that going into a new relationship shortly after a loss may be unfair to both you and your new spouse, depending on your unique circumstances. Consequently, they advise you to stop from doing so until your situation has improved significantly. The use of drugs or alcohol to cope with your feelings is not suggested. For those who seek to achieve a total recovery from their loss, the alternative is not an option. Aside from that, making important life decisions, and even the act of doing so, should be avoided at all costs. It must be avoided at all times if at all possible and avoided completely if at all possible.
Due to your negative feelings toward your spouse, it is possible that you are having difficulty refraining from engaging in self-destructive behaviors. This is particularly true in light of the circumstances surrounding the end of your marriage. It's important to recognize that you're not alone in feeling these feelings at this particular moment if this is the case. But the help and guidance of an experienced psychotherapist or counselor may be beneficial depending on the specifics of the situation. May God help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Divorce is one of the top stressors on every list that I've seen. How is it possible to stay positive when you're going through a divorce? By the end of this video, you're going to have some clear ideas about how to do that. I strongly believe that you can be positive no matter what. As we apply this to staying positive while you're going through a divorce, let's do this as a top 10. Starting out with number 10, realize that it's a choice. I say it this way partially because of my own background and upbringing. I was raised in a conservative religious community where divorce was one of those taboo subjects. It's something you never talk about and it's never an option. And I think that doesn't serve people well. It is a choice. When we make it a choice, it's easier to do some of the other things on the list that we're going to get to. Realize that this is a choice. A legitimate life option that may happen. The thing about choice is until we see something as a choice, it's not. A lot of people end up in circumstances in life through whatever complex series of events has happened that they didn't plan on being here. Seeing the choice in the matter is an important step to put you in position to do what's next. So let's move on to number 9. Coming in at number 9 on our list is to forgive yourself. Start right here at home, okay? This does not mean that you failed your relationship. Although that's a common way to talk about it. Let's just vacate that kind of thinking because in my mind that's a victim paradigm and it's not helping anything. Be very forgiving and tolerant. This happens to good people like you. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you can't do relationships. It doesn't mean that you have failed. It simply happens. It's one of those legitimate life circumstances that a lot of people experience including really great people like you. Let's be very forgiving of people who go through a divorce and especially this one, okay? As you're going through this, be very forgiving of yourself. That brings up number 8. Forgive your ex. Soon to be ex as the case may be. Let's stop beating people up for the choices or circumstances that lead them into whatever position they're in right now. Here's the thing about forgiving your former spouse. It frees you up and that's the main reason that I would ask you to do it. Now, is it going to benefit them? I've had people in my office who dig in their heels and it's like, that person doesn't deserve forgiveness. What they did was wrong. They didn't even acknowledge that it was wrong. They've never apologized. See, they're listing all of these reasons why not to forgive the ex. Guess what? If you forgive your former spouse, it frees you up. It might benefit them but that's only secondary and do it anyway, okay? Don't be that person who's not willing to forgive. You forgive your ex, it frees you up to have some powerful experiences and to stay positive through this divorce. Now, let's move up to number 7. Number 7 is to own your choice. Do you remember number 10 that you have to realize this is a choice? Own your choice. What I mean by that is stop blaming circumstances or people especially your ex. Stop blaming for what's happening here and own your choice. This is a choice. You are here by choice. Now, you might resist that and say, but I'm not the one who chose this. Yeah, I get it. There are a series of choices that you can own about where you are right now. 
And this is not a bad thing. It's just where you are. So, own your choice. If you're the one who decided to end this marriage, own that and quit blaming your ex. If you're the one who chose to stick with it but your spouse bailed, then own your choice to stick with it. And don't blame your spouse that you're in this divorce. Just say, you know, my choice is to stay together and I honor the choices of other people that have me where I am right now. This is subtle and it's a little tricky. Owning your choice puts you in a position of power and allows you to remain positive in the midst of a difficult circumstance. Just remember to stay away from blaming. Any aspect of blame means that you're not owning your choice. Get clear about what your choice is and then own it. Just a little side note here. Many of you know that I've done child custody evaluations in the past as part of what my practice was and I have talked to so many kids who are trying to adjust to their parents' divorce. One of the most troubling things for them is this conflict that comes up when one parent is trying to blame the other or when they're blaming each other and fighting back and forth and guess what? This space is not safe if there's crossfire and that's where the kids are. That's why it's so important to own your choice. Divorce is a choice. Okay? Wrap your head around that. It's going to help. Even if it stings a little bit. Let's move on. The next item up on our list is number 6. Be careful about which clubs you join. I don't mean the commercial club downtown where you can get a drink or do some dancing. I'm talking about the clubs. You know, like the ex-haters club, the former husband haters club, the ex-wife haters club, the man haters club, the woman haters club. Do you see how these hateful clubs don't help anything? And you're at risk. So, be careful which clubs you join. This has a whole lot to do with what your social media activity looks like. You just go look. You look at some of the news feeds that are out there for some of your friends or people that you know who are those bitter angry divorce club people. Yeah, really? Do you want to be part of that club? You don't have to join that club. Be careful about which clubs you join. Which leads us right into number 5. We're going to create a new club. And this one is a positivity club. Number 5 on our list is to create the positivity club. Ask your friends. Ask your family. Invite them to join you in taking a positive approach to this. It's intentional. It's a choice. And I think your friends are going to support you. Although they may have already joined another club. An invitation from you and it can sound just like this. It can say, look, divorce gets nasty. I don't want my situation to be like that. I'm taking a positive approach to this where I'm choosing to forgive and move on. Will you support me in doing that? You can be that direct. It's going to blow their mind just a little bit. But you know what? Who's in charge of this thing anyway? Do you have to get sucked into the negative angry vitriolic stuff that is typical of divorce situations? No, you don't. Create a positivity club. Invite your friends and your family to join you there. Now, let's move up to number 4 on our list. Understand your part. This goes right in hand in hand with what we've already talked about. Where you're going to refuse to blame, you're going to practice forgiveness. Now, it's important to look at your part. When I did those child custody evaluations for the court, I would bring in one side the mom for example and she would tell me her story and I'd listen to her story and then dad would come in a few days later and I'd listen to his story and I've got these two different stories and guess what? They don't match. Who's right? I had to learn really quickly it's not about who's right. It's about what's right and everybody has their part. So there are elements from each of these stories that give me an idea of what's going on and I can see very clearly clearly as an evaluator that both of these people have misbehaved. 
that both of these people have violated principles. That's not what we're focusing on. They're just human beings, right? We all make mistakes. And you probably did. Okay. Welcome to Earth. That's how we roll here. It's okay that you made mistakes. Get clear about what those are. Because you're not done yet. Are you? No. And as you move forward with your life, does it serve you well to understand what your part in all of this was? Now, in saying that, I'm not saying that you should take the blame. Blame is a victim mentality. We're not going there at all. Let's stay on the agent side of the equation. And understand that you had a part in this. What's my part? Humbly be open to what's my part. Because that serves you well going on. You don't have to share this information with your ex. That probably wouldn't help things. But own it yourself and understand so that you can take a higher level of positive control over your own life. Okay, we're up to the top three now and this gets back to my favorite topic, positivity. Number three, see that your life is good and it is. Focus on gratitude, that's probably the quickest way to get there. I know you're going through a hard time. Divorce is one of the top two on every list that I've seen on stressors that can happen in life. In fact, divorce is higher on the stress list than death of a spouse for a lot of reasons that you're starting to understand. This is a hard thing that you're going through and it can be very distracting because of the pain and the disruption and the challenges that you're facing. That it'll pull you off balance sometimes and get you thinking, Oh, my life sucks. No, it doesn't. Oh my gosh, your life is so abundant and beautiful and blessed. Focus on gratitude and that's what will bring your mind back into positivity mode. See that your life is good and abundant and rich and blessed. And if you need some help with that, watch a few more videos here and I'll try to pump you up for it. This is true and it's a powerful way to keep a positive approach while you're going through a negative thing. Moving up to number two, create hope for the future. Because you're not done yet, are you? No, you're going to move forward from here to where? And you've only got two options. What if I were to present it to you as two options? Look, okay. You can have something better after all this or something worse. Now, which one of those do you want? Or do you want a little time to think about it? No, you know what you want, don't you? Duh, we all want something better. You've got the power to create this. How you handle this right now matters. Staying positive not only makes your life more pleasant right now, it sets you up to create something even better than what you've already got. And I will get behind your upgrade all day long. I got your back on this. The best way to get that upgrade is to see that what you've got is already good. And then we apply that positive energy to making it even better. We both know that there's better things you could do, right? So, let's get busy working on that. You create the hope for a better life. Now, that leads us up to number one on our list. And this is really a summary of many of the other points that we've already covered including positivity and forgiveness and choice and all of that great stuff. Here it is. Number one, choose love. Remember, you've always got a choice and in every interaction you have with anyone else is going to fall on one side or the other. It's either going to be a hate choice. I use the word hate because people hate the word hate. But think about it. What's the opposite? A love choice. It's either going to be love or hate. Get clear about which one and you choose love. Believe it or not, staying positive might be one of the easiest things to do once you understand those principles. We've got a playlist here on the channel about some tougher issues that you might encounter in your divorce. Check that out as well.